My name is Georgie. I am NatureTrack's TaylorMade Manager. Um, and for those of you who don't know much about our TaylorMade department, uh, we are the private bespoke arm of NatureTrack. So if you ever wanted to take a uh, Nature Trek group holiday, but perhaps the uh, dates didn't fit, or you wanted to organize something privately for your family or just as a couple or a group of friends even, um, then Taylor May can certainly help. We can organize uh, itineraries which are very similar to our group tours, but we can also organize holidays uh, to certain national parks and areas that might not be visited on our group holidays uh, or even to different countries. Um, so if you've got an idea for a private tour, um, then please do get in contact with us. Um, there's plenty of ideas on the new tailor-made section of our website. Uh, we have a dedicated Nature Trek tailor-made brochure so if you'd like a copy of that, please do get in contact with our office uh, or just give us a call. We're always here and happy to discuss your ideas. But that's enough about TaylorMade. Uh, this evening, I'm going to focus on Australia. So Paul took us on a, a lovely tour of Tasmania um, and I've now been tasked with covering the whole of the rest of Australia. Now, it's going to be far too much to try and cover that in just 20 minutes. Um, so I'm predominantly going to focus on a couple of my favourite tours uh, on uh, the, the mainland of Australia. Um, but it's also just um, worth noting that although most of our group holidays are between 10 and 16 days in length, we do appreciate that uh, a lot of people, when they're travelling all that way, would like to go for a bit longer. So we can certainly organise uh, extensions for you if you just want to spend some time with family or friends. Uh, we can just organise for your flights to come back a bit later um, or we could organise tailor-made extensions. But we have also, from 2022 onwards, planned all of our Australia holidays so that they can be taken back to back. So if you want to, you can go on one enormous uh, journey covering almost all of Australia um, and, and tick everything off in, in one wonderful trip. So that includes our Southern Australia tour, our Queensland tour, our Tasmania tour, and also our New Zealand tour. Um, so, so the timings have been coordinated uh, with all of those. But this evening, first of all, I'm going to focus on our Queensland's Rainforest and Great Barrier Reef tour. Um, so that focuses on the two areas that you can see here in red and those circles. Um, so predominantly we'll be up in far north Queensland, up around the Cairns area. Uh, and then right at the end of the holiday, we'll fly back down to Brisbane and the Lamington National Park uh, and end the holiday there. So as I said, we will start the holiday in Cairns. Um, Cairns is a, a lovely town um, and it's a great place to sort of get to grips with our first Australian wildlife. Uh, there's an esplanade that runs sort of all the way along the length of the town. Uh, and so we'll be looking here um, a, a, along the tidal flats for, for pelicans uh, and other waders and water birds. We'll be looking up in the trees um, for species like this lovely double-eyed fig parrot. Uh, this is a real speciality of tropical North Queensland. But Australia in general is often known as the land of the parrots and we'll see a lot of them during this holiday um, and actually on any of our holidays to Australia, uh, parrots are a real highlight. And then on our first full day in Australia, we will head out to the Great Barrier Reef. So this is the world's largest coral reef ecosystem, uh, and it's uh, a lot of people's reason for wanting to come to this part of Australia. So on our first day, we will head out for about 90 minutes uh, on a cruise, and we will end here at Michaelmas Cay. So this is an uninhabited sandy island uh, that's very, very popular um, and, and with abundant bird life. So here mainly we can see sort of brown and common noddies. Um, we'll also be looking for lesser and greater frigate birds um, and possibly even some of these lovely brown boobies. And then after a morning on the island, uh, we will head out onto the reef itself and we'll have our first opportunity to enjoy some snorkelling. Um, so we can get right in here and hopefully see some, some fantastic things like this green turtle. Um, but for those of you who don't feel comfortable getting in the water and doing snorkelling, uh, there is also the opportunity to enjoy some glass bottom boat tours uh, so you can actually see all the marine life from above. 
And then on our next day, we will head out on a second cruise onto the Great Barrier Reef. So this day will um, work very similarly. We'll have some time on one of the islands and some time snorkeling, um, but going on two different cruises gives us the opportunity to look uh, at species on both the inner and outer reef uh, and really get a better feel for this fantastic ecosystem. We will then head up further north for a couple of hours into the rainforest area uh, where we'll see habitat like this and this fantastic curtain fig tree, which is a, a type of strangler fig tree. And the forests here are just teeming with all kinds of different wildlife. Uh, we'll see really colourful pigeons or like do dove, sorry, uh, like this Wampu fruit dove, um, which is one of my absolute favourites. It just looks to me like a child has just got a pigeon and coloured it in with, uh, with Crayola colouring pencils. Um, but we'll also see other strange looking pigeons like this crested pigeon, which is again one of my favourites. Uh, we'll be looking for mammals as well. This is actually a musky rat kangaroo. So yes, it is definitely a kangaroo. It is, it is not a rat, but it is the most primitive type of kangaroo um, that there is. And it can be found in this tropical rainforest area. Um, if we're very lucky, we might see one of these. Speaking of mammals, we'll do quite a lot of spotlighting during our time in, in the rainforest. Uh, we'll be looking for species like this common brush tail possum. There's quite a lot of possums that we'll be looking for in this area. Uh, we might see green ringtail possum, brown lemuroid possum. Um, and another species which we'll be looking for is this lovely Lumholtz tree kangaroo. Uh, so yes, that is right. They do live in trees. They are completely arboreal kangaroos. Uh, and this Lumholtz tree kangaroo is, is um, very unique to this part of Australia, the Atherton Tablelands in particular. So speaking of unique wildlife, uh, this is a duckbill platypus, which we will hope to find during the tour. Um, Paul mentioned in Tasmania um, that they are possible, but it's also possible in much further north in this part of Queensland. We certainly don't see them on every tour, um, but there are sort of four or five locations that we will try on the tour. And uh, quite often we will see them um, probably more often than not, I would say, um, but still a bit of luck and, and some excellent guiding are definitely needed. And so then we'll head out to some of the drier areas. And now this is what I really love about this holiday in particular, is this part of Queensland allows us to explore so many different habitats uh, within just a couple of hours drive of each other. So in the morning, we can be down right on the coast. Uh, in the afternoon, we'll be up in the, the tropical rainforest areas, um, but we'll also have access to this, um, th these drier areas sort of on the edge of the outback where we might hope to see species like this Australian bustard. Uh, we might hope to see saris cranes um, or collared sparrowhawk even. Um, so it really is a very diverse tool. It's not just the birds that we'll be looking for. Um, this is very sort of um, multi-interest holiday. So we'll also be looking for butterflies, amphibians, reptiles. Uh, and this is one of my favorite butterflies. This is the, the Cairns birdwing. And towards the end of our Queensland holiday, uh, we will spend time in the Daintree. Uh, and this is the Daintree Riverview Lodge, which is where we'll be staying. Uh, so it's quite simple accommodation, um, but very comfortable. And as you can see, see here, it is perfectly situated to look for wildlife. Um, we can just spend time out on the terrace in the mornings and as we come back in the evenings uh, and just wait for the wildlife to come to us. Um, it really is a lovely place. And on one of our mornings in the Daintree, we'll be up early and we'll take a river cruise uh, in search of species like this fantastic estuarine crocodile. Uh, other water species we might hope to see are lots and lots of different kingfishers. Uh, this is an azure kingfisher, which is one of my particular favourites. And then in the Daintree rainforest, we will spend uh, quite a bit of time searching for this, which is the southern cassowary, which is one of the real targets of our holiday. So they can grow up to six feet tall. Uh, and although they are quite elusive, uh, we do have reasonable chances of finding them. Um, there are a couple of sites where we, we know they're fairly regularly seen. But as you can see here, absolutely fantastic animals, beautiful coloration, fantastic combs. Um, they also have some quite unusual behavior. Uh, it's actually the, the fathers um, that, that look after the chicks. So if you ever see an, an adult um, and a chick, it, it's um, likely to be the male that, that's looking after it. 
And then that ends our time in the far north of Queensland and we will then fly down to Brisbane uh, and we'll head straight on to the Lamington National Park and O'Reilly's Rainforest Retreat. So Lamington is actually Australia's largest subtract of tropical rainforest. Um, and although we'll spend time in rainforest uh, in far north Queensland, we'll find this area um, quite a bit cooler and we'll see some quite different species here as well. So we see lots of very obliging species like this lovely king parrot. There are, um, uh, there are feeders all around the lodge. So most of the wildlife um, is, is fairly easy to see and photograph. Um, and yeah, lots of fantastic colorful species like this. This is the Regent Bowerbird, which is sort of the flagship species for O'Reilly's uh, and something we've got quite a good chance of seeing. We're very unlikely to see the actual bowers of these birds. Uh, there are guides who've worked there for, for years and years and never seen the bowers. They're, they're quite temporary, um, but the birds themselves are, are generally quite obliging and we've got a fair chance of seeing these. We'll also have a chance for some different mammals. Uh, this is a, a whiptail wallaby. Uh, and a sugar glider as well, which is one of my favourites. So we'll go out spotlighting for these. We're unlikely to see them in, in daylight like this, um, but we'll go out looking for the eye shine. Um, and yeah, it's a fantastic part of the tour. So that ends my whistle stop tour of Queensland. Um, I will now go on to talk about another of my favourite tours, which is our wildlife of Southern Australia tour. So this is the two red circles that you can see here. So for this tour, we'll start in Sydney uh, and explore the area around there and the Blue Mountains. We'll then head down to Melbourne uh, and explore the area around Gippsland, uh, the Great Ocean Road, uh, Lake Mungo National Park. So this is where we'll begin our holiday at the Sydney Botanic Gardens. Um, and I personally think this holiday is a brilliant one for first time visitors to Australia. Most people want to visit the, the cities, um, but even if you don't, it's amazing how much wildlife can be seen in these more populated parts of Australia. Um, obviously, Australia for a country isn't particularly populated anyway, um, but it's amazing once you get slightly uh, further away from the people what, what you can see. But right in the heart of it, we'll see fantastic colourful species like these rainbow lorikeets. Um, these were some of the ones that I really wanted to see during my first visit to Australia. Um, but then you'll find that they are absolutely everywhere. And um, it's, it's great to get lovely photos like this one. The laughing kookaburra uh, is another species that we're likely to see around the towns and cities. Um, it's actually the largest kingfisher in the world. Uh, and a quite flagship species for Australia. Um, and this is a superb fairy wren. I think Paul showed you one in Tasmania as well. Um, but the, the fairy wrens are one of my favourite um, Australasian families. What I really love about birding in Australia is that there are just so many families uh, that can't really be found anywhere else in the world. Uh, and I think the fairy wrens are a really nice example of that. We'll then head up to the Blue Mountains National Park. Um, so this is part of the Great Dividing Range, uh, which is uh, land formations that formed over 50 million years ago. Uh, and as part of that, they give rise to lots of fantastic different habitats. So we've got eucalypt woodland, uh, we've got open forest, uh, we've got heathland, uh, and that in turn supports an amazing diversity of wildlife. Parrots here were really well, well represented as well. This is a sulfur crested cockatoo, um, which is again, one that we should be able to see fairly easily, but, um, but lovely nonetheless. And Paul showed you the, the 40 spotted pardalote, which is uh, endemic to Tasmania. This is uh, its um, uh, the spotted pardalote, um, which is one of my very favorites. I just love the fiery coloring of this one. And it's again, another one of my Austra favorite Australian families. We'll see lots of mammals here as well. Um, so this is the Eastern Grey Kangaroo. Uh, swamp Wallaby, we'll see lots and lots of Swamp Wallabies throughout this tour. Uh, we'll also see Rednecked Wallabies and we'll have a chance for Common Wombats as well. And we'll then fly down to Melbourne. 
And some members of the group might uh, like to spend a bit of time just exploring Melbourne, um, but most of us will head down to an area called St Kilda, where we will look out for these uh, little blue or fairy penguins, as they're affectionately known. Um, and they come out in each evening uh, into their nighttime roosts and, and come under the boardwalks. And it's, it's a really lovely way to spend an evening watching them come in. We'll then head straight out to the Yu Yang Ranges, uh, which offer our best chances to see koala. Um, koala are almost guaranteed on this tour uh, and we'll spend some time with, with researchers who are um, yeah, been with looking out for the koalas. Uh, they actually realized that koalas have um, a nose print. Each one is completely unique and identical. Um, identifiable so it's, it works in quite a similar way to a human fingerprint and that is now quite a common way of identifying individual koalas and so we'll learn a lot about their social structures their interactions and their biology as well we'll then continue our journey along the great ocean road uh, ending at the 12 apostles here so this is quite a well-known um, tourist route but it's absolutely amazing that the wildlife that can be seen as we travel and this is one of the species that we'll be looking out for, which is the satin bowerbird. So bowerbirds are again, one of my, my very favorite families. Um, they're so named for these uh, bowers, which are the, the straw structure that you can see there, um, which the, the males build to attract, fe attract females uh, as part of quite a, an elaborate courtship display. So also as part of this, uh, you can see in this picture that it, it looks like he's, um, selected a particularly rubbish strewn area to, to build his uh, his bower in but actually all of these individual blue items have been carefully collected uh, because the bower birds each individual species has a particular color scheme uh, that they like to go for and the satin bower birds collect blue things and so they'll create anything they can find uh, which is blue and bring them to their bower to attract the females um, just absolutely fant fantastic fascinating behavior We'll then head down to Mildura and go across to the Lake Mungo National Park, which is a completely different habitat for anything we've enjoyed before. So uh, it's called Lake Mungo National Park, but actually Lake Mungo itself dried up around 18,000 years ago. So now it's a very dry, arid environment. Uh, but it's been continually inhabited by humans for over 50,000 years. And so we'll learn a lot about the Aboriginal cultures um, that, that have lived there um, and how they've interacted with the environments as well. And we'll be looking out for species uh, like this emu, which uh, can be seen in, in this salt bush here. We'll also look out for wedge-tailed eagle, um, is it an odd thing? And again, back to the parrots. This is a mulga parrot, um, which is a lovely desert specialist. And we'll look for uh, red kangaroos as well as western grey kangaroos. And I thought I'd include this just to show the type of accommodation that we're likely to stay at. This is fairly typical of all the accommodation that we will use on pretty much all of our Australian tours. Uh, so it's all very comfortable, uh, en suite, um, but, but quite simple accommodation. Um, but most importantly, it's located in the very best areas for seeing wildlife. For the final part of our tour, we will head to uh, East Gippsland, which is most well known actually as being a dairy farming area. Um, but uh, it's got some fantastic habitats uh, and we'll spend time in the Buckingham Caves Reserve, where we hope to find species like this uh, short beaked echidna. So Paul was talking earlier about the short-beaked echidnas in, in Tasmania, sorry, but you might notice uh, that the photos he showed, uh, the echidnas had much longer fur and the spines um, kind of blended into the fur a bit more, whereas these look a lot more substantial uh, and that's just regional variation. We'll also be looking for a powerful owl, the um, largest owl in Australia. I will be looking for superb lyrebird, um, which is the largest songbird in the world, actually, made particularly famous by David Attenborough during his Life of Birds series, uh, where he was with a lyrebird that was mimicking a camera shutter. And they're absolutely incredible mimics. Uh, they can mimic ambulances and babies, um, and it's all part of their really elaborate, impressive courtship display. And this is a real target of this area. 
So that brings us to the end of those two tours, uh, but I couldn't finish off without uh, just briefly mentioning uh, the Northern Territory. So there's some fantastic species um, that, that can be found almost exclusively here. We've got pink-eared duck, uh, black-necked stork, big birds, uh, Gouldian finch, which is one, one of my absolute favourites. And one of the jewel, of, the jewel in the crown, really, of, Cac of the Northern Territory is Kakadu National Park. So Kakadu um, actually boasts up to a third of uh, all of Australia's bird species. And so for, for keen birders, we definitely recommend spending time around here. This is the rainbow pitter, which is another species that we might target in the monsoon rainforest, sorry, monsoon vine forest here. And finally, um, it's also just worth mentioning Western Australia, um, some fantastic endemic birds, um, but it's also particularly well known uh, for being the area where one of the world's most impressive wildflower displays can be seen. So there's over 12,000 species that can be found here, um, up to 60% found nowhere else on earth. Uh, and in the months of September and October, uh, most of these come out into, into bloom. So again, I don't have time to go into this in great detail, but I just thought I'd show a couple of the, the fascinating species we might hope to see. So these are tall tail flowers. Uh, this is a slender banksia, one of many banksias that we'll see throughout this tour. And this is the royal hackia, which grows up between two and three metres tall. Uh, so very impressive and with this gorgeous colours. Whale watching is also incredible in Western Australia. And between June and December, it's possible to see southern right whale, humpback whale, blue whale, um, and it offers some of the very best whale watching in Australia. So sadly, that takes me to the end of my tour in Australia. There is so much more to say, um, but we're going to have to leave it there. Um, if you've got any questions, please do pass them through and I'll answer as many as I can. Uh, but now I will hand you over to Matt, uh, who will take you on a tour of Papua New Guinea.